So I wanted to make a unique video for today's, and it's a my wife's build of an actual computer. I don't do computer builds on this channel as, well, I'm cheap. I don't like water cooling. I don't like a lot of the flashy stuff that's just so darn cool on other channels. So if you're interested in that, Linus Tech Tips, Bitwit, Jay's Two Cents, all those guys got you covered. However, for this one, we're going to be doing a complete beyond budget build. This means I'm going to be reusing an old case, power supply, hard drive, and I think I have some extra GPUs laying around because, well, yeah, I used to be one of those guys that did crypto mining. So with that said, what did I buy new? And what I bought new was G-Skill, uh, 16 gigs of G-Skill, some coolers because old cases, uh, leaving old fans in is just not usually recommended. We got a Ryzen 3600. Uh, I got this on sale at Micro Center uh, with a combo with a gigabyte motherboard. Nothing too fancy here. All pretty much budget, really budget. And what I want to do is build my wife a new computer because have, coming from AMD Phenom, I think she was from 2008 or so when it came to that. I had a little YouTube story where it showed the BIOS, which was really ancient. So uh, with that said, let's get over. I got three shooters for this video. I got my main wide shot. I got a lock-in shot. And then I'm going to have a GoPro with a headlamp uh, to get uh, more of the closer in shots. As I don't have a film crew, it's just me and my garage. The other point is I usually am running my AC in here. And since this is going to be a longer video, usually I can just record and it'll be done in 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to probably start sweating towards the end here because it's Texas. I'm filming in my garage and yeah, that's what we're just going to get. So that's what's happening there. I'm not like coming down with anything, or at least I don't think I am, <laughs> but I'll let you judge. Uh, so with that, let's get into the actual PC. This is the old PC that we're going to be dealing with. Nothing too crazy here. It's not that bad of a case. Uh, not great. It's not like a name brand, like a Fantex or an NXZT. But uh, it does have a little cable management. So I can hide most of the cables, do a decent job with the zip tying. So I'll put it over here and let's get building. Oh, I got the old, what is this, uh, 212, I think was the model number of this guy. God, it was such an oldie, but a great one, an old coal master. I don't know if they still make this model, but uh, I used the crap out of it, what, 10 years ago? Um, from this one, I'll probably save the CPU, memory, and then I'm going to probably chunk the motherboard, just because this is a really old system. Oh, uh, one more thing, when, when doing a screwdriver, obviously don't use an electric screwdriver, but I do have, this is a double jointed screwdriver, so when you turn both ways, just makes it a little, a little faster, one of my favorite tools. There's the old motherboard, got an old DVI, VGA, oh man, kind of, kind of cool, but it did have an HDMI, I guess that was one of the first ones, but anyways, that's the old motherboard, I'm going to toss this. Now, there are a couple things about this case I wanted to go ahead and show. I've already done most of the tie downs and I'll probably leave all the routing as this is actually pretty solid routing. Uh, things I need to change is probably the airflow. I like to have one intake fan, one output fan. Ideally, I would like to have two Noctuas, but a micro center was uh, kind of gouging the prices on this where uh, the Noctua fans were over $30. So I ended up going with an Arctic cooler. This one is not so bad. It's cheap. It's about eight to ten dollars. Not my first choice. Uh, probably be quiet would be above that, and then obviously Nocto is my first choice. Uh, but you know, beggars can't be choosers here. But I do want to replace some of these old fans, as leaving those in probably not a good idea. All right, fan design here. Usually intakes from the front exhaust from the back. Ideally, you want a neutral airflow, which means, uh, you know, with every fan you have, one intake, one output. Also, when screwing in fans, don't over tighten, otherwise you'll strip it. Don't, don't do that. That's bad. All right, uh, we'll put the faceplate in first. And since every, all the routing's pretty much already done, uh, we should be able to drop this motherboard right in. Take the old face kit plate. New faceplate in. Uh, 
That snaps right in. Here we go. One issue I see here is on the back side, I don't have a plastic standoff right here, and this case isn't designed for this specific form factor. So when I go to push my power supply in, uh, it's going to put a lot of stress on this middle section of the board because the only support it's going to have is right here and here. Um, so I'll probably need to, you know, obviously do that. Not ideal, but, you know, we're just going to go with what we have. Looking at the board here, we got DDR1, which is at the very bottom, and then DDR2. So we'll put a one right here and here, so we get dual channel. Uh, we could probably use the other two, uh, you know, obviously just don't bulk them up. So we use single channel, we want dual channel. Uh, one nice thing about these uh, newer PCs, they started doing this again, is it's actually two notches now. It used to be like a rocker in, which is crazy because, you know, 10 years ago it was this way. So they finally went back to this uh, form factor, which is good. So we'll just put this right in. And I'm going to hold on the edge as I remember. And just should be able to rock that guy in and get a good snap. And we did. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my power cables. Uh, right here is the motherboard power. And yeah, it's always nice to get this in before you put the heat sink on because it's a pain to get otherwise. Then we just go motherboard power over here, main power. And now we gotta do our motherboard headers. These are the Probably the worst part of mini PC builds is putting these darn pins on. Uh, but let's just look at the manual and then uh, put these in per diagram. All right, this is a bit cruel and unusual. I don't like this. The F panel, which is the front panel with the power reset, usually they put a diagram, but this manual from Gigabyte is pretty terrible because it doesn't even have this so you got to have a computer to see how to hook up the front panel it looks like and download the full manual uh wow that's really horrible so bad job to gigabyte on that uh i'll go ahead go over to my computer and see if i can't pull up this model number and get a diagram of the front panel so we need to actually tie in these guys for our power button to work all right, so I have the front panel pulled up over here. Uh, looking at this, we'll go ahead and hook it up. Power LED is pins two and four, two being positive. So let's go power LED. And that should do it. So now we have the front panel hooked up. Everything looks good here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the CPU fan in. All right, here's the progress. Uh, we're about 30 minutes into the build. Uh, got pretty much everything in here. Uh, just need to get the graphics card, a couple other things uh, tied up, and we should be able to package this back up and go from there. Uh, as you see, when you're building, if you zip tie all your cables and get it kind of out of the way, even when reusing a case like this one, uh, my original... Uh, cable runs and everything, we're pretty much in the same spot. It's nice that almost all the manufacturers leave all the jumpers in each specific spot so you're not sitting there struggling to cut all the zip ties and reroute everything. Having like the HD audio jumper, uh, your USBs, everything kind of in the same spot is, is really nice between all the motherboards. So I'll go ahead and finish uh, hooking up my CPU fan, everything else, zip tying a couple loose wires in here and uh, we should have a pretty much functional system. So let's go ahead and uh, do the finishing touches. Uh, no PCIe needed. Uh, this is already all hooked up. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. We'll go ahead, package everything up and power this guy on. All right, initial power up here. Let's go ahead and try to turn this guy on. Hey, looks like we have some power here. Probably should use a regular monitor instead of a big old TV. But, you know, it's what we got. So, give it a second, see if it hits the monitor. Come on, monitor. All right, looks like our, our HDMI cable wasn't all the way in. Uh, fun fact, though, when you're refurbing a computer like this and reusing the hard drive, uh, you'll notice on here that uh, 
the actual P PC will redo uh, all the devices. Not like Windows 7 and prior versions where you had issues. This will actually go out, do all the, the drivers, get it all back and going. Uh, I do like to run like SDI tool afterwards, make sure all the drivers are installed. If this was Linux uh, on most of my machines, that's what I run. Uh, we wouldn't run into any issues. So it looks like this already came back up. Uh, that's my wife's uh, screensaver. So I'll go ahead and turn this off uh, and then hook it back up into uh, actual screen capture. I just wanted to power it up, make sure everything's good, and then uh, we'll go ahead and finish uh, the actual configuration. So I went ahead and took that PC inside, hooked it up to my wife's computer, got everything going. Everything's right with the world. And guess what? I didn't spend a thousand dollars like most other places out there. So it, if you already have a custom built PC, the beauty of it is you can reuse a lot of those components. Sure, the case is ugly. Yes, the fans and things in it aren't exactly what I wanted, but for the most part, it performs pretty much identical to a lot of these thousand dollar machines that you go out buy off Amazon. So that's the beauty of reusing some of these parts. Like when it comes to the PSU, uh, those types of things, they last quite a while, you know, usually 10 years or, or so. Uh, the CPU or the actual PSU in this unit was a little newer because my wife actually uh, spilt water down the computer and fried it a couple years back. So I knew that PSU is only like maybe three years old. So kind of cool. I just wanted to just showcase this that, hey, instead of spending a bunch of money and building a whole custom thing, you really can reuse what you have. There's a lot of things and get a huge amount of performance increase. As a 3600 for under $300, that's pretty incredible. And uh, maybe that's just because the 4000 series is coming out and you maybe you wait for that. But for me, my wife's computer was down and I was like, yeah, let's just go ahead nip it in the butt and take care of it. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.